Well, many, many bodies of water have a silty or mucky bottom, and man, you do not want to miss this spot. We know that bass, largemouth and smallmouth spotted bass, they love hard spots. Well, so many of the places that we fish, it's just mud, 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 silt, 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 muck, muck, muck. So we need to narrow down where those hard spots are. And the easiest way that I know to do this is to think about wind and think about boat traffic. Find those places where the current, whether it's wind current or natural current, and the current from that boat wakes or the, from all those boats in the summertime, they're going to keep an area washed off and clean. It's really surprising how well these three types of currents can do to keep silt and muck out of an area. Now there's some spots that are very high percentage areas to look for. When you're looking at points, usually there's going to be a wind blown side of that point. That point is likely going to be much clearer than the other side. Saddles are some of my absolute favorites because as this boat traffic rips through these saddles or that you know prevailing wind hits them, they can clear off just an amazingly large area, get rid of that silt and get to that rocky bottom. Uh, bends, creek channel swings, the outside bend is going to be clearer than the inside bend. That current really picks up, okay? Think about it, uh, let's say a marching band and a parade, okay? So you got the inside and the outside as they turn a corner in a parade, the ones on the outside, the, the musicians have to march much quicker to keep up with that pivot, that gate as it swings. So your outside channel bends and creek uh, channel bends, those are absolute dynamite places to look for areas that are clear of silt, clear of muck, and you can get to that rocky bottom. Here's another one that I rely on all the time and it's often overlooked. As if you're in a place, a body of water that has a lot of development, okay, there's a lot of homeowners there, look for places where the homeowner has dumped a lot of sand to make a beach. As erosion occurs, the big storms come in or boat traffic washes up on their beach, it pulls that sand out into the water. And I have seen places where there's a sandy bottom that'll go 15, 20 feet out into the lake depending on uh, the severity or the angle that the shoreline drops off. But these are bass magnets. One, the panfish love to spawn there, okay? And spawning bluegills, bass love to be right there. But these beaches are places that bass will often come up to because it's a continual source of that harder bottom. It just doesn't have that silt and muck. So that's probably my, my best ninja tip right there is, is to look for those areas because I will see boats in the summertime just go right by them and just kind of cast on either side of them and just ignore the beach completely. Now, once you find these areas or you go to these areas and if you are out in a boat with electronics, now is when you can start to scan, side scan, and look for those bumpier spots, those rougher spots within those areas. Is there a little bit bigger rock on that pea gravel section, or you know, maybe within that big sandy section, is there a spot where a current has washed it away and it's gotten down to some, some harder rock below that sand? So once you say I'm going to check here, here, and here, give it a quick scan with your electronics and see what type of hard bottom areas are there, or I like to say a spot within a spot. And if you really want to keep going with this thinking about where bass hang out idea, go ahead and check out this video right here that talks about maybe we need to rethink about the type of cover we're actually targeting. I think you'll find it pretty interesting and make sure to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.